So thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. I could really resonate with what you were saying. You're welcome. Something that I've noticed among people with a spiritual background is this, and also in my experience for a really long time after I left the temple, is this endless frustration of losing the so-called center or identifying with thoughts, feelings, sensations, and perceptions. So this afterthought saying, oh, I lost it again, I wasn't there uh, while it happened, which of course is an illusion because if we say that we weren't there, that means we were. So my question is, what is your advice in, in regards to this? More practice necessary. <laughs> I know you. You're very, very smart and also spiritually endowed. <clears throat> and when the two together you know, form an image of practicing, a sensation of practicing, then you can actually lose the original practice that doesn't have any of this. So the moment this kind of uh, sensation comes that, oh, I lost it, my center is not so strong. Oh my God, what, what's happening? This thing is stuck on me. Somebody said to me something and I can't get rid of it. I'm thinking about it. It happened two weeks ago. Why is it in my mind? So then immediately turn it into a deep question or start your mantra and then the cleansing process is in good order. All right? So the moment you see that your meter goes from the yellow to the red, mm -hmm. immediately reduce the input from the environment. Reduce the stimuli. Therefore, you reduce the loss of energy. That's your kind of instant retreat. You go out into the forest, take a walk, go to the park, not talk to anyone, walk for half an hour, walking meditation with the great question, what is this? And you only practice the moment. Or you practice the mantra, gate, gate, para, gate, para, sam, gate, bodhisattva. Then your center becomes stronger. The six thieves, mm -hmm. they do not steal from you. Not just your thief, other people's thieves, okay? The notion is okay. Understanding our own mind, not good, not bad. But if we don't do something about it, nothing changes. In mm -hmm. fact, the more reflections we have, the more layers, meta layers we are building up. And just the reflections, just the intelligent perception, it's not enough. You know, Houston, we have a problem. All right. <laughs> they are dead. So then they have to do something about it. What have you got on board? Then you know the story. They made some serious engineering miracle. They survived. They landed. Congratulations. Immediately return to practicing mind. Immediately come back to Tantien. Mm -hmm. Immediately non-duality. Right away. Mm -hmm. No thinking. You come back to don't know. One step. And you have it. You reflect on it. Am I really okay? Lost. Completely lost. So don't lose the question. Don't lose the moment. Mm -hmm. Don't lose your tantien. Then your meter stays always in green. When we see this going back and forth, shall we relate to it with compassion and understanding? No, saying don't that, baby your karma. Saying that it's a matter of time until we get established. Don't explain things to yourself. Only practice. So you want to have a little shortcut, you know, the intelligent shortcut. <clears throat> Doesn't exist. <laughs> In fact, you're making another detour. Only don't know. In your world, mindfulness leads you to the same thing. Except mm -hmm. Zen is a little bit more brash. Only don't know. Okay. Mindfulness, it's wonderful. Sensation, here's sensation. So then it leads you to the same empty mirror. Great. Mm -hmm. So come back to practicing my right away. And if you have a student that is kind of giving you these inputs, then you can have various types of treatment. Some people only can take the slow way, step by step, a little bit of nurturing. Otherwise, their center not so strong, they can shy away, they distrust you. Say, Suddenly, she doesn't like me. Of course, because it's one step. It's like an injection instead of pills. But the doctor or the nurse doesn't dislike you because you get a shot instead of pills. Same thing. Mm -hmm. You get a one-step teaching, it's even better because not so much pain. 
more thinking, more pain, more karma, more attachment. I decided to ask a question because I saw that a lot of my question, I have, they have the same answer. Are you answer. sure? I think, I'm not sure. But this I, hit and this hit, are they the same or different? Correct. So don't say they are the same answers. Mm. They are at least three seconds after one another. Mm. Or two different contexts, or from two different people. What's your question now? It's about dreams. I thought it was reality. <laughs> reality is really darn difficult. Dreams, easy. Very easy. In this retreat, a dream came up really strong. It's a dream. Once? No, it comes a lot. It's a recurring dream. It's a dream I dreamt many years ago. Oh, yeah? And I always had a feeling it's a special dream. It came up really strong. When I practice, when things like that come, so I try to let go of them and not hold on to them. And I always feel the pull. It's like a magnet when I try to let go. So there's something that tells me, don't let go. But I know I should let go. This you know that you should let go? Don't send away the mailman. He's <laughs> trying to deliver you a letter. So why do you send the postman away? That's your intellectual thinking, I should let go, I should. Maybe the dream is a serious message from your subconscious. How about that? Yes, yeah, so that's why I'm asking about the dream, because I feel this is different. And I'm asking, should I let it go, or should I? No, you should ask a question. You know, Zen means you're asking the right question. So that blessed morning when you wake up and the whole clip is in your mind, don't touch it, come for chanting, very important. Chanting prepares your mind, makes it very clear, and during sitting, the dream reappears because you are prepared to look at it. We call this object-oriented meditation. And you ask, what is this? Where does it come from? Then if there is any hidden parts of the clip, many times there are that you haven't seen, but they are revealed. It's not your intellectual mind or your emotional intelligence filling in the gaps. It's really the unseen parts of the dream. And then it reveals its cause and effect relationship. And if it's a really important message from your subconscious, then it will open up like a lotus and show its cause and effect relationship. Why is it important that you open it up during meditation? Because if you meditate right, your I, my, me does not touch it. Your mirror mind perceives it. Especially if it's an ongoing, recurring dream, it means you haven't read a letter from your subconscious that you should. Once. No, I dreamt it only once, 20 years ago. You I, still remember it? Yeah, very, very clearly. Of and course, because you haven't opened it up. The, the moment I woke up that this is something. But now it comes and I don't know what to do with it. Because Again, you should ask the question with unmoving mind and let the dream reveal its own meaning. And That's then, the message. Okay, I think I understand some of it. What should I do with it? Should I act on it? No. You should see what the dream really suggests. It was 20 years ago. See if you act it out what happens and if you don't act it out what happens. Sometimes dreams are very clear warning signals. They're not imperatives, they are signals. You go right, that's what happens. You go left, that's what happens. When you have opened it up and the dream became complete because you asked this question, what is this? Where does this come from? You can ask a different question while still having the complete picture in your mind. What is my job? What do I have to do? And then perceive cause and effect. Be very careful. Sometimes old karma is locked down in your subconscious and it keeps broadcasting a signal like a ship that sank a long time ago yeah. but somehow the beacon is still broadcasting SOS. There's nobody to be saved. Everybody's dead. Everybody turned into fish food 20 years ago but still the beacon says okay, irrelevant. So see whether it's relevant, whether you have anything to do with it. And again, don't let just your thinking or your emotions decide that. Let your true nature perceive that, okay? 
which direction do you take if you follow it? Which direction you take if you do not follow it? All right? Success. It's a mind game. Okay? You're welcome.